and welcome. My name is Harem Bob and welcome to Bob Buys where I am so excited to share with you guys part one of this thrift haul, this ridiculous $153 thrift haul that I did this week at the Goodwill. Um, I had some time. I wasn't feeling so good. I hadn't been thrifting in months, like really thrifting where I'm like, I'm going to spend all of the time here until I get all of the resale gold out of here. And that is what I did. And $153 later, let me show you. So I'm going to break this into two parts. This part, this first part is going to be all of the hard goods and the I don't know, accessories, I guess you would call them. And then part two will be all of the clothes and shoes. So let's dig in. So I'm gonna go probably from maybe least exciting to most exciting. So I picked up these two pieces of hosiery and this is a modern pair of Worthington tights. I picked them up because they would be half off. So this was like a dollar and 50 cents and you know, retail they're 14 and it's going to be winter. So, uh, you know, I'm not gonna sell these for a crap ton of money, but turning $1.50 into like 12, that's all I'm aiming for there. And then this other pair is vintage. These are very vintage. And the reason why I picked these up, I don't normally picked up vintage hosiery, but this also was half off because it was orange tag for this week. And the reason I picked this up is because this is a colored hose. So this is supposed to be pink. So I can't tell based on the hair, this looks like it's probably late seventies, early eighties. Um, there's no date on here, but that is why I picked this up is because it was a colored hose and it was vintage. So these will definitely be going up on Etsy. And I probably also won't be making very much. I'll have to do a little bit more research, but my guess is like 10 to $15 on these. The next item I found was this really cool, like I can't go to a thrift store without mugs. And I found this really cool uh, travel mug. These are mugs that aren't supposed to be able to tip over because they got that fat bottom. And I just thought that was really pretty. It reminded me of Otagiri. This is not Otagiri, but it is like a nice beach scene. And I figured this would be a really cool coffee mug for summer, you know, or if you've got like a beach house. It's really cool. It's so clean. I don't think that anybody used this because it is just, it doesn't look like there's no silver scratches. There's nothing in here. So I think someone actually just used this as a decoration. But it's really pretty. I really like the glaze on it. Um, I did pay up for this, it's like $3, but I will pay up for mugs when they're really cool. So this is probably $15 to $20 because it does look like it is handmade and also very decorative. Speaking of mugs, I picked up this for $3. It is a Ray Dunn Bliss mug. The reason why, normally I don't buy these big Ray Dunn mugs unless they're like a dollar because the market is very saturated, but paid up for it because it's got colored insides. So the color insides do normally sell faster. Um, they still sell for about the same amount of money, but they tend to sell faster when they are a vibrant color inside. And this one is pink. So these will definitely probably go on Poshmark because that's where I've been selling all of my Ray Dunn at. Speaking of Ray Dunn, we have some bakeware. I have two, these are new. They actually had like the TJ Maxx tags on them, which of course I removed because I'm reselling them. Um, so these were new and never used. I got the Yum Love Pan and the Homemade Brownie Pan. New, like brand new. Like if you bought this from Ray Dunn Magento site when they were new, this would have been $55 and this would have been $45. So. Uh, I paid like $5 a piece for each of these. I'm hoping to sell it for 30 and 20 because that seems to be about what they're going uh, on Poshmark, which is again where I've been selling most of my Ray Dunn. I'll pick it up if it's cheap enough and uh, I've been selling it. So I pick it up when it's cheap and I get it at the thrift store. Mm, all right, what is next? Oh. This next thing I picked up is I paid $2 for these vintage Tupperware 
Measuring cups, if you guys don't know about Tupperware, uh, these, these are actually really popular for reselling. This is missing the, this is mi missing um, the third cup, which would have gone in here, and it's missing one other one. So this came in a six series set. Okay, so it's missing the full cup, and it's missing the third cup, and that would have been the complete set. But even an incomplete set like this, because people do collect them, I could still probably get 10 to $12 for them, which is why I pay two. I just like rescuing vintage Tupperware because my mommy has the orange set of these still hanging in the kitchen. This also came, or an optional thing that you could have bought was this octagonal thing that you, or hexagonal, I guess, because there's six, hexagonal thing that you could have hung on your wall to match these and you would have hung it up next to your oven which is what my mommy did and she has the orange ones of these and uh, she's missing one so I keep hoping to find that one because it got lost over the years but I always rescue the vintage Tupperware especially the green orange and yellow from the late 70s early 80s because that is what I grew up with so that's more of like sentimentality got me here but I can also make a little bit of money next thing I picked up is blank media this is a set of Ativa blank 50 pack. I think I paid like $2 for this pack, two or $3, something really inexpensive. Um, they're not going for a whole lot. It's like this brand because it's not like Sony or one of the big brands. Um, these are going for like $15 on eBay. So that's where they're listed. What I found really funny about that is there were two obvious resellers, two dudes that were resellers that were like talking about each other and checking eBay comps and stuff in the hard goods, um, but they weren't doing the breakables. They were doing, you know, what I would typically see business bros doing and they are, you know, going through all electronics and stuff. And that's why I just kind of ignore that and just stick to the, to the ceramics and breakable hard goods is because normally I don't get to find stuff like that because it's not there because business bros get them. But more breakables. So I next picked up this glass bake. I paid $3 for those. I think this is the onion pattern. I know it's got green flowers, but I think it's called the onion pattern. I'll have to go look at my glass bake gang Facebook group. I actually got this for myself, to be honest. Um, this is like vintage glass bake is probably one of the best things you can actually bake in. Um, and this is a perfect brownie pan. So I, it doesn't look like whoever had this really used it at all. Cause like the bottom doesn't have any scratches. The inside has like one scratch in it so I don't I think maybe they used it once and then never used it again so I'm probably going to use this until it sells this isn't going to sell for a whole lot just like the corningware this is really really good bakeware it's super sturdy awesome you should definitely buy it for yourself instead of going to like Walmart or Target and buying new Pyrex go buy yourself some vintage glass bake and some vintage corningware for a couple bucks and get another couple of decades of use out of it. But that's what this is. I'll probably, if I sell it, it'll be like 10 to $12 plus shipping. I always make the buyer pay shipping for the heavy stuff. Um, or I could sell it on Poshmark and then the buyer would only have to pay like $7.11 for sh shipping. Hello, Miss Moxie. Speaking of vintage corning wear, I am continuing my collection here. I don't know if you guys can see it here. I collect Green medallion or green macrame, however you want to call this. This is a originally a promotional or premium item, as you want to call, or item for free or gift with purchase uh, for the Shell Oil Company in the late 70s. And I collect it because I like it. And this is like, um, this was an original made in the USA. This is heavy. But you can see that this one was well loved it's got lots of scratches and definitely needs to be cleaned but this is for my own personal collection i have a couple of the pans and like the refrigerator dishes as well so i'm just adding to my collection so i guess this technically doesn't count for resale but it's a bad and i guess miss moxie wants the internet to say hi to her because she has decided to come up hello baby girl She got a bath this week. 
She hated every minute of it. And she got new kitty caps on her toe beans. Can you see? Can you see? No, you're not gonna focus, are you? Well, she got new kitty caps on her toe beans. They're purple. And I do that because she does have a skin condition, which is also why she gets regular baths. Um, she'll scratch herself raw. So it's one, so she doesn't scratch everything in the house, but also so she doesn't tear herself up as well. Let's see, this next item, also probably gonna use it until it resells. Uh, I don't have a Sunbeam Baker, but this is another piece of glass bake. This is a Sunbeam small mixer bowl with the little thing. These sell only sell for like, the replacement ones only sell for like $10 on eBay with shipping. Um, if you get like the pink one or the blue one or like the pastel green or yellow, if you get any of the colors other than milk glass, they're gonna sell for a little bit more. But I got this because I wanted a mixing bowl. I actually uh, don't have any. <laughs> that have the little pour spouts. I have like one Cinderella Harvest Bowl Pyrex, but I don't really count that because I don't use it because I'm waiting to complete the set to sell it. So this is kind of a use until it sells and if it doesn't sell, I don't care. I'll just keep using it. Then we have these. Mid-century modern beauty here. Look at my messy there's the box light, and there's my fan, there's my other box light. <laughs> this is a mid-century modern, like it still has the made in the USA tag back down there. I paid $3 for this. It has these brass fittings, so I will be cleaning the crap out of this. This needs some Brasso. So I will be using Brasso on this, making it all shiny and pretty, probably putting some wood oil on the handles here. And this I could probably sell on Etsy especially with the brass detailing for probably about 30 to $35, um, just because mid-century modern is still in. It is kind of going on its way up, but it's still in. All right, now I'm into like my three excited things that I got. So, excited thing number one, doesn't fit me, my head is, uh, Oh, that's why it doesn't fit is because it, there we go. That's better. <laughs> this is an Indiana Jones collector series hat. I paid $3 for this. It is wool. It's 100% wool. It is from 2008 Lucasfilm LTD. So this is like a, a reproduction movie prop and um, these are going for like 45 to $50, and I paid $3 for it at the thrift store. When I saw this, I was like, ooh, this wasn't even the hat section. This was like, they have baskets on the clothing racks at the Goodwill. This Goodwill that I went to, they took the time during COVID shutdown to completely renovate and remodel this Goodwill. So they moved everything around and got all new racks and stuff, and most of the clothing racks now have baskets on top where they like put other products, and this was in one of those baskets. So I'm glad I actually walked the whole store this time. The second thing that I am super excited about is these. So this, I paid $5 for. This is a Samsonite Locking Profile 2. It does have a tear in the bottom here. It's got a little tear right there, but I can fix that. I am sewing capable enough for this. Now, if you notice here, these little gray bits right here, there was a tray that went in here and sat right on top. It would have been either maroon, which is the color of the case, or it would have been beige, which is the color of the inside of the case. It is missing that, so that does decrease its value if I do decide to sell it. Um, but it still has its full length mirror, which is a uh, beautiful and intact. It doesn't have too much roaching on the edges, which is really nice. And other than that one tear, it's actually really clean inside and it still has both keys. When I saw that it still had both keys and I could still lock it, I was like, yes, for $5, I am definitely going to buy this. Now, because it is missing its inside tray, 
it devalues it about like 10 to 15 dollars so this is like a 20 25 dollar case plus shipping if it still has the matching tray inside it would be like a 45 to 50 dollar case but i mean it's still very usable travel case as it is and it is just beautiful vintage vibes right here and the last thing as you guys know that i'm super excited about is this george briard beautiful giant like this is my body it is wider than my body it's like almost my whole torso this is a huge george briard glass serving platter now this pattern if you see these lovely ladies here in their little togas this is called olympia if you don't know who george briard is and you do reselling let me tell you about him because he is a definite bolo to be on the lookout for. That's what bolo means is be on the lookout for. Um, George Briard is an artist, a glassware, barware artist from the mid-century. So he was most active in 50s, 60s, and 70s. In the 50s and 60s, he did a lot of mid-century modern barware. I would highly recommend you Google uh, George Briard, pick your poison barware, and then marvel about how much they resell for. But... Um, he made more kitschy style stuff in the 70s, so mostly his 50s and 60s stuff is the stuff that does the highest resale value, but it is definitely something that I always look out for for Georges Briard. This is the first time finding it not an antique store for full retail price, so getting this beautiful tray for $5, amazing. It's not one of the most desirable pieces, but there are collectors for the Olympia set. Um, this tray because it's its size and I've honestly not seen a curved one of these plates. I've seen the chip and dip set sold as a set without its golden chip and dip thing. I'll show a picture of that up here so you know what I'm talking about. If you see two plates of different sizes that are together and they don't have that, that's what they were. They're just missing the hooky thing that makes it a chip and dip set. I've not seen any of the serving trays of this size before, so I am super excited about that. I think I can probably get like $65 for this on Etsy. And again, I only paid five for it. But I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this two-part haul. And thank you guys so much for all your lovely comments that you left on my thrift shop trip. It made me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And hopefully I will see you guys uh, for part two. Bye. Bye. Hero, hero, I wanna be a hero, hero. Oh, the hero.